Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. April is my favorite month. It is also my birthday month. However, since Caroline go outside anymore, I decided to bring the outside inside with my festive little flower crown. <laughs> Try and bring some cheer to this day. Yeah, I'm gonna be turning 25 this year. In all of my 25 years of life, I've never seen anything like what we are currently dealing with. If anyone is an anxious mess like me, you find that reading is sometimes a really good thing to help you cope. And I do find myself reading more than I was. I was kind of like slumpy. Last month is the first month I made a TBR in like a while. But I do just feel like turning to books for comfort in these times. It really helps me just kind of escape for a little while. And so I do have like a big chunk. It is an ambitious TBR, but it's, you know, I'm excited to try and tackle all of these and see what I can get done in terms of reading in April and just enjoy my time being in these stories and not being in the real world. So with that being said, let's just get into the TBR. The first book that I want to tackle this month is Sarah J Mass's House of Earth and Blood number one in Crescent City. I mean, I have just been awaiting this book for so long. I love it without the dust jacket as well. And I did just happen to order an exclusive edition. I think it was the tour copy. Waterstones put it up on their website for sale. And so I was able to snag a copy and I'm really excited for that to come. I love Sarah J Mass, trash for Sarah J Mass. I love the whole Thorn of Glass series and the whole Akatar series. I honestly feel like I'm kind of due for a reread soon in those. Once I found that she had her new adult series coming out, I have been waiting for this forever. And I do think Kingdom of Ash, there is a specific world jumping scene in which the city of this book was referenced. So like, I've had my eye on it for a while. So Crescent City follows Bryce Quinlan, who is half fae, half human in this kind of urban fae setting. So it is fantasy, but has more kind of technology in it, I believe and her life is pretty perfect until her best friend is murdered. She's left bereft and when the killer is put behind bars but the same crimes keep happening, Bryce takes it upon herself to solve the murders and avenge their deaths. We also follow Hunt Althatar who is a fallen angel and because of that he is enslaved to the archangels that he wants to try to overthrow and he kind of wastes his days away slaving for them However, he is offered a chance at freedom if he helps Bryce find the murderer. And so as they dig deep into Crescent City's underbelly, they discover a darker force at work. And the story goes from there. I mean, I just love Sarah J Mass. I just know her ability to weave a story is just great. I've been looking forward to this book ever since it came out. And yeah, I just like, I love these, <laughs> the super thin Sarah J Mass pages. I just cannot wait to absolutely dive into this book. I feel like I'm just going to fly through it because I'm going to be really invested in it even though it is very long. So yeah, I'm just holding it and I'm loving it and I just think it's going to be a great time. And I think I will potentially do a dedicated reading vlog to this depending on how long it takes me. So keep an eye out for that. So next, there are some mangas that I want to read this month that I didn't get to in March. The first one is Missions of Love Volume 1 by Emma Toyama. I got this in Book Off when I was there in New York City with Maddie in January for $3. And she said it's a really fun, kind of steamy series where we follow cell phone novelist Yukina Himero. And she is this novelist, but she actually doesn't have any romance experience. So she needs to find someone to play the part of her boyfriend and kind of blackmails the most popular boy at school. So it seems like it just is going to be like fun and maybe a little risque. So I'm excited to see what it's like reading that type of story in manga format because I'm not very well versed in manga at all. And next we have Iona of the Dawn volume three. This is back. So here we follow the story of Iona who is a princess and she lives an ideal life in her kingdom except one day her father is murdered and she must escape with her bodyguard Hack. And so they set out on a journey to find a priest that can see to the future. This series has many volumes and I'm slowly working my way through them but this is the first like manga that I've picked up in a while where I'm just like really excited to read the whole series so I'm hoping I can pick up one or two a month and work my way through them and then like slowly collect the series um because I just haven't collected any manga before and it's something that I'm excited to start having a collection for. Okay, so before I go into my ARC collection for the month, because there are quite a few ARCs I want to work my way through, I do have an honorable mention, and that is The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. And I, 
I did start reading this in December and then just I was enjoying it but I was just in such a slump I just couldn't read it which like so rarely happens to me in high fantasy especially because i love these types of books and i was loving it while i was reading it i just i just like couldn't read anything i don't know i just i, I wasn't in the mood so i just do want to pick this back up and finish it because i shouldn't abandon books like this especially when i'm enjoying them even though it's like it's okay if i wasn't feeling it you know but i do want to come back to it i don't want to just forget about it because this is such a beloved series and i did love what i read i just i don't know just went through it and that's okay it happens sometimes but I should tell you what Mistborn is about. So this is the Mistborn trilogy. The first one is the Final Empire. So for this basically is about the Lord Ruler is this Dark Lord that won and he's ruled over the land that has reigned Ash for a thousand years. And the Ska have been slaved in misery and lived in fear. There are these people known as the Mistborn which you have the ability to ingest metal and turn it into some sort of power. So like the metal gives you the power to do your specific ability and if you're misborn you have the power of all the metals and it's known as allomancy and so we follow a ska a street urchin who happens to be a misborn which is unheard of and their rise to overthrow the dark lord so yeah i mean just like a classic high fantasy story was into it but i need to get back to it from there i do have some arcs that i really want to read i got all of these at ala when i was there in january i have my haul there if you are curious about any more of the books that i got there as well as a vlog from that occasion which was really fun so the first book that i want to read is ruthless gods by emily a duncan i read the first book in july with the overhyped book club and i absolutely loved it i thought it was so cool and the sequel is just proving to be like I think it's going to be an even greater follow-up and because Maddie has read it and she said that it's amazing so I really really just want to read this one. I just think it's going to be so cool and just like it's super crazy. So in Wicked Saints it's a Slavic inspired world and we follow three characters. Nadia who hears the voices of all the gods in her head. Seraphin who is a prince that has assassins after him at every turn, and, and Malakiaj, who is a boy with a monstrous secret. When there are three paths crossed, they decide they must come together and kill the king. It is just very well done in terms of lore and stuff like that, but I will say that there is a trigger warning for blood magic. If you are someone that does not like graphic descriptions of cutting and blood and all that, it would probably be best to avoid. And I think this one might have eye horror I've heard somewhere, but like don't take my word on that. But yeah, if you can stomach that, it is really worth the read because I just think it's very, very well done book and I am really, really excited for the sequel. Next up is The Betrothed by Kiera Cass. Like, can you see this cover? Kiera Cass is someone that is, she's known for the selection series, which I actually never read, but it is like kind of touted as like YA dystopian the bachelorette and so when i heard about this book that's coming out i uh, was very excited because it seems like a very fun book and it is about a handsome young king who has declared his love for a lady and she is a would-be queen she is thrilled she is shocked and she's grown up vying for the king's attention and she wants to become the queen However, then she meets a stranger that sees right into her heart. So what will she do? So she's betrothed to the king, but then she falls in love with someone else, which just sounds like perfectly scandalous and like a really, really fun book. And I know Kiera Cass is beloved. It's beloved, beloved, I don't know. So I just think this one's gonna be really fun to sink my teeth into. Next up is Don't Call the Wolf by Alexandra Ross. And this is about forest lore oh i meant to say the arcs that i'm trying to read this month are ones that come out in may so i would have hopefully reviews up for these before they are released in may so this one comes out oh this one is actually out in april though but i don't know what day in april okay so this is out april 28th so two days after my birthday it says in the tagline disappear into a forest of shape-shifting queens bone chilling monsters and deliciously dark magic in this richly imagined ya fantasy debut so it is a debut novel i love the cover it's just very like lore heavy so we follow ren who is the forest's young queen and she is losing her battle against the golden the golden dragon and its horde of monsters so she rescues lucas who is the last survivor of a heroic brigade of dragon slayers and strikes a deal with him. She'll help us find his younger brother who vanished in the forest as long as he promises to slay the dragon, but promises are too easily broken. Uh, yeah, it just seems like a very cool foresty story and I love some good forest lore. It seems very fairy tale esque and I do enjoy fairy tale esque stories. So I 
think this is going to be a good read. After that, we have a romance, which is by the book by Amanda Sellett. And this is a YA romance, which I have not read too much of. So uh, it'll be interesting to see like how this reads different than a adult romance, for sure. So Mary Porter Malcolm has prepared for high school in the only way she knows how, an extensive review of classic literature to help navigate friendships, romantic liaisons, and overall drama she has come to expect from such an esteemed institution. And so she in she imagines herself as a heroine of a 19th century novel, and she has the Scoundrel Survival Guide, which is using archetypes of literature's Devonar and bad boys to signal red flags. However, despite having this whole guide to herself, she finds herself potentially having feelings for the resident bad boy of the high school. So who knows? knows what she will do in, mod in the modern day world without her little guidebook. And she's forced to admit that real life doesn't always follow the rules of fiction. And the last arc that I have for to read in April that comes out in May is The Jewel Thief by Jeanne Mobley. So it says, a stolen diamond, a dramatic confession, a once in a lifetime love. So this is actually like a YA historical romance, I believe. And so we follow Juliet, who is the daughter of King Louis crown jeweler and her father is falling into a depression and so she takes it upon herself to be the one to carve this massive hope diamond however she ends up in prison for ruining the diamond i believe or she is accused of stealing the diamond and ends up in the bastille and she has one chance to prove to the king that she did not steal the diamond to make matters more complicated the court scribe is the man that juliet loves renee and however renee has his own motivations for holding a grudge against Juliet. So this seems like very interesting having to do with jewels and thievery set in this olden Paris setting and I do I am interested to read more like why historical fantasy romance. I think it can be a really really fun niche. And last up for the month we have Monstrous Volume 3 Haven. I have been reading these comics, I think I read the first two in like, maybe like November or something and I haven't picked up the third one yet, but like I am in love with this comic and the art style. We follow Micah Halfwolf in this world that's very steampunk inspired where we have the arcane and the humans and they are at war with each other and Micah is on a mission to find out more about her mother who has been killed. However, she has this demon creature inside of her that is turning her into a monstrous. And it just has like gorgeous, gorgeous art style. It's a really fun comic to read with very cool world building. I've just been truly enjoying every volume that I read and I can't wait for more. And I hopefully will potentially pick up volume four as well and maybe read that too. So. Who knows because i do love this comic series and with that said that is like pretty much a quick walkthrough of everything that i want to potentially read in april the month of my birth and the month of staying inside so with that being said let me know if you are looking forward to reading any of these same books or what is up for you to read in april down below in the comments and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one Bye.